This lecture is an overview on the advanced encryption standard. So we will look at how the encryption and decryption process happens in AES and how are the round keys generated. Now, while triple DES is regarded as secure and is well understood, um, it is slow, especially in software, uh, because now we are performing 48 rounds on every plain text block since DES has 16 rounds and 16 times 3 is 48, so uh, it is slow. So there was a need for a new standard that could replace it. Therefore, the National Institute of Standards and Technology, NIST, issued a call for proposals for a new cipher standard in 1998 that would be secure and fast in various types of hardware and software. Uh, 15 candidate submissions were accepted in June 1998, and out of these, five were shortlisted in 1999. Namely, Mars, RC6, Rindale, Serpent, and Doofish. One of these submissions, um, known as Rindale, was selected as the Advanced Encryption Standard in 2000, and it was published as the standard in uh, 2001. And it is supposed to have an active shelf life of about 30 years, so until 2030, it is considered secure. So in Advanced Encryption Standard, or AES, we have a 128-bit block. So plain text is divided into 128-bit blocks before being processed. And AES supports multiple key sizes. We have 128-bit. 192-bit and 256-bit keys possible in AES. And depending on the key, uh, there are either 10 rounds, 12 rounds, or 14 rounds, respectively, uh, through which the plain text block gets processed. One key difference between DES and AES is that AES does not use the FISTO structure. So there are no left and right halves, and the whole block gets processed through the round function in each round. Uh, so for the sake of understanding the AES algorithm, I want to explain the term state. Uh, so we refer to the plain text block uh, as well as the key block as a four across four um, byte uh, matrix known as state. Um, so we have a 128 bit uh, plain text block which essentially is 16 bytes. Um, and similarly, if we are looking at the AES that supports 128-bit keys, then again, we have 16 bytes. And we arrange uh, these bytes uh, column by column to get this uh, state matrix. So you can see here, um, the first four bytes are in the first column, then the next four in the next column and the next from the third column, and so on. And same goes for the key. So let's say we have our 128-bit um, block here, and um, a 128-bit key here. So we will write the first four um, bytes, which are shown here. These will go into the first column, then the next four bytes, are going to go to the next column and so on. The same thing over here, the key uh, block is going to be stored as a state matrix as follows in the same manner. So let's look at the encryption process for AES. So this figure shows how the entire AES encryption process um, works for 128-bit key, um, which has 10 rounds. And so we will focus on this one. Um, so what happens is that we start with XORing um, the plain text state with our uh, symmetric uh, cipher key. That's our initial 128-bit key. And um, that's our initial round where we use the initial cipher key and we just XOR that cipher key 
with the state. So we have a one 28 bit uh, plain text block state matrix and one 28 bit cipher key block um, state matrix. And then we XOR them together. And then we have a new state offer plain text block. And then what we do is we process this um, state nine times using this round function, right? So we have uh, a set of four steps that happens in each round, and we do that nine times. Uh, we have uh, the subbytes operation, we have the shift rows operation, we have mixed column operation, and we have the add round key operation. And so again, this means that we have um, a unique round key for every round. And these round keys are again generated from that initial um, cipher key that we have. Uh, then we have the final round or the 10th round in which we only do three operations on this new state that we have as a result of these nine rounds. Uh, we do subbytes step, we, should, we do shift row step, and then we do an add round key step. And um, the output of this final round is our ciphertext. So let's look at each of these four operations that take place inside an AES round. So the subbyte step, the shift row step, the mixed column step, and the add round key step. The first operation is the subbytes. Uh, this is a substitution step. So it stands for substitution bytes. Uh, and what it does is it replaces each byte in the state with another byte using this substitution box. So let's say our um, byte um, is one nine in hexadecimal. Um, so what we do is we take the first four bits uh, of this byte, which is actually one. And then we look in the row labeled one, which is this row right here. And then we take the last four bits of this byte, which is nine, right? Um, and then we look in the column labeled nine. And then we take the byte value that is uh, at the intersection of these two, which is our value D4. So we will replace the byte 19 in our state matrix with the byte D4. And then we repeat this for all the bytes in the state matrix. So we have 16 bytes in our state matrix. We will replace all these 16 bytes with another 16 bytes, right? So um, this substitution table works exactly the same as um, how Wigener cipher uh, table, for example, works. So again, we have row labels here and we have column labels here. And then all of these numbers in the substitution table are hexadecimal numbers. So each of this is one byte. So pause here and find the resulting state after performing subbytes transformation on the following state using this substitution table. So assuming you have completed the exercise, um, this is the answer. So let's say for A0, you will look in um, the row labeled A, and you will look in the column labeled 0, and at their intersection is E0. So you, what A0 will be replaced with E0, and so on. After subbyte step, we have a permutation step known as shift rows. As the name says, we do a circular left shift on the rows of our state matrix as follows. So again, the output of the subbyte step uh, goes into the shift rows step. And so we have a fixed manner in which we perform the circular left shift on the rows of the state matrix. 
So basically, the first row remains unchanged. The second row is circularly left shifted by one byte. Third row is circularly left shifted by two bytes. And for the fourth row, we do circular left shift by three bytes. So pause here and find out the resulting state after performing shift row step on this state. So assuming you have completed this exercise, the resultant state after performing shift rows on this matrix is this one. So you can see here, the first row remains unchanged. The second row, we left shift circularly by one which means that 27 is going to come at the very end we have bf b4 4 1 and then 27 this one circular left shift by two bytes which means that these two bytes are going to go towards the end and then the third row sorry the fourth row is circularly left shift by three bytes so all of these will go towards the end so the next operation is mix columns in this operation, each column of the state matrix is multiplied with this fixed matrix right here. So let's say this is the first uh, column of our state, and we multiply it with this uh, fixed matrix and get another column which looks like this. Um, and so to do that, if you remember linear algebra, uh, you will take the first row and multiply with this whole uh, column. Um, this is what it will look like in the expanded form, and that will give you the first byte, right? So multiplying this first row with the column, you get 0, 2 into d4 plus 0, 3 into bf plus 0, 1 into 5d plus 0, 1 into 3, 0, which gives you 0, 4. Now, one thing to note is that all these multiplications are done in Galois field, which we will not go into detail. Um, but essentially, what you need to know is that we convert each of these bytes into polynomials and then multiply them, multiply those polynomials and reduce them, and then convert them back to binary. And essentially, over here, these additions will become XOR operations. And so again, you're going to repeat the same thing for each of these other rows, which will again give you three more bytes in this column. So this is just one column of um, the new state matrix. Now we need three more columns, which we will get in the exact same manner as we got the first column by multiplying them with this constant matrix. Uh, so let's say if this is our current state matrix and we multiply each column of this state matrix separately using this fixed matrix, this is the new state matrix that we will get. Then we have the add round key step in which each byte of the state is XORed with the corresponding byte of the round key. Right, so uh, this byte is going to be XORed with this byte. So 0, 4, XOR with A0 will give you A4, and so on. Let's look at how the round keys are generated uh, in advanced encryption standard. So for understanding the round key generation algorithm in AES, um, we are going to consider each of these columns, which has four bytes here, uh, as a word. Right, so we refer to each column as a word. So we start off with our cipher key, which is 128 bits, um, um, and then it's arranged as this state matrix here, which has four rows and four columns, and uh, each value here is a byte. Right, so we have four words here. And one more thing is that we use this uh, fixed matrix known as Rcon matrix, right? And so this one has 10 columns. And so what we do is we use each column from this matrix uh, to generate um, each of the 10 round keys, right? So we have 10 columns here, and then we have 10 round keys. So what we do is 
to generate each of the round keys which are also 128 bits in this case um, right so this box here is showing you the first round key box the next uh, box here is showing you the next round key and so on all the way uh, up to 10 um, round keys uh, so to generate the first column of each round key matrix, um, there is slightly more number of steps as compared to generating the remaining three columns of each round key, right? So for the first column, we have different set of steps. And for the other three columns of the round key, we have um, other steps. So let's take a look at how to generate the first column of the first round key. So what we do is we take um, <clears throat> uh, the word i minus one, which is basically the last column of our initial key, right? So if wi is the current column of the current round key, then i minus one is the last column of the cipher key. And what we do on this column is we do sort of like a circular left shift by one byte. So this rot word operation is just a rotation of this word. Since I mentioned that the column is a word, uh, we will basically just um, circularly left shift this word by one byte. So basically when, once we do that, 0, 09 is actually come going to come to the end like this. And then what we do is we take this um, output of the rot word operation and then we perform a substitution byte operation on it, right? And basically what this is is just uh, substituting each byte of this word with another byte in the same way um, that we performed um, sub-bytes operation in the encryption uh, process of AES. We take the first four bits of each byte to look in a specific row, and then we take the next four bits of this byte to look in a specific column. And whatever byte is at their intersection is basically the byte we replace this byte with. So, for example, for 4f, we're going to look in row labeled 4, and then we're going to look in column labeled f. So, at their intersection, we have 84. So we need to replace that with 84. So this is the result that we get after performing sub bytes operation on each of these bytes. So again, we have this fixed S box that we use for this. The next step is to then XOR this output with the first uh, column of this Archon matrix, okay? And also with another word that is I minus four positions away. So this is I, the current location, one, two, three, four. This is the word that is four positions um, back. Okay, so we XOR these three. Um, so you can XOR these in any manner. You can first XOR these two and the result you can XOR with this, or you can first XOR these two and then the result column you can XOR with this, right? So each corresponding bytes are going to be XORed. And then we get this result. This is basically the first column of um, our first round key. Okay. Um, and so again, for the first column, we performed uh, a dot word operation, then we did a sub bytes operation, and then we did an XOR operation. Okay. And then for XOR, we took um, a column that was four positions back, and then we also used one column for this R, from this Archon matrix. For generating the other three columns of the key, we actually just uh, XOR this previous word, which is I minus one positions away because now I is this column. So we take I minus one column and I minus four column and then XOR them together. So one, two, three, four. We're gonna XOR this column with this column, right? So we just um, do the XOR operation and the resulting column is going to be our second column of the key. Then again, now I is this location. Um, then again, we take the XOR of um, I minus one, which is this column, 
and i minus 4, which is going to be this column. 1, 2, 3, 4. And then we XOR them together. That gives us the next column of the key. Then again, to get this specific column, we're going to XOR i minus 1 word or column with i minus 4. And that is our first round key. Now, again, we're going to repeat this whole process to generate each of the remaining nine round keys. So, um, again, to generate the first column of the next round key, we're going to do three operations. We're going to take uh, i minus one word, which is this one, right? Again, you're going to do a rot word operation on this. Basically, you're going to take 2a and then move it down. And then you're going to perform sub bytes on this. Okay, and then you're going to XOR uh, this result with the next column of Archon matrix, which is this one, and then also with a word that is i minus four positions away. So if this is i, this one is i minus four. One, two, three, four. So that gives us the first column of our second round key. And then again, uh, for generating the next three. Um, columns of the round key 2. We're going to just uh, do an XOR operation on word i minus 1 and word i minus 4. So basically, uh, in this case, we're going to take this column right here and this column right here. Now, again, to generate the next column, i minus 1 is this column and then i minus 4 is this column. We're going to XOR these together. Now again for generating the last column, i minus 1 is this column right here, and then i minus 4 is this column right here. So we XOR these together. And here we have our round key 2. And then we're going to repeat this whole process to generate all of the remaining round keys. And then that's how all the columns of the Archon matrix are also going to be get, get used. Now let's look at the decryption process for AES. Um, uh, the decryption process of AES is the reverse of the encryption process. As you can see here in the slide, the left side is showing you the encryption process, the right side is showing you the decryption process. So we start uh, from this direction and go all the way up over here to get our plain text. And notice here that we are actually using an inverse operation of the shift rows an inverse operation of subbytes, an inverse operation of mixed columns. Right, so unlike DES, the decryption process of AES needs um, inverse operations for each of the, these steps. Right, so going from this direction, what we will do is we'll take our ciphertext. First, we will do this add round key step because that's what we did at the end um, in encryption in round number 10. So technically, we're doing round number 10 first, then we're doing round number 9 first, um, and then we're doing round number 8, and then all the way to round number 1. Right, so here basically we are adding round key 10, and then we're doing shifter operation because that's what we did here, then we're doing sub bytes operation, um, and then, uh, then we're doing an add round key because that's what it, we did before it, and so on. Right, so we're just going to do all of this in reverse. And so when we say inverse shift row, we're basically going to do circularly right shift instead of left shift. When we're saying inverse sub bytes, uh, the actual substitution uh, for each byte is the same, that we're looking in a specific S box, but the S box itself is a different S box, which is actually an inverse S box of the one that we used for encryption. Add round key step is the same because XOR operation stays the same for encryption and decryption. Uh, however, for mixed columns also we have an inverse operation, which basically is um, the exact same matrix multiplication process, but uh, the constant matrix that we multiply each column of the state with is different, right? So that uh, constant matrix is actually an inverse of the constant matrix that we used for encryption process. And then 
when we do the add round key step here at the very end, we're actually adding the cipher key. Um, just like uh, in the encryption process, the very first step that we did was um, adding the actual cipher key um, to the plain text, basically XORing these two together. That was round zero. So that's what we will do at the very end, moving from this direction onwards all the way to the top.